Every team has one player, or really one position for that matter, that it's kind of up in the air. Like, this could either be really good or really bad. Uh, and to me, Jermaine Illuminar for the Las Vegas Raiders is the biggest wild card. Because this offensive line, oh, it's so close. It's so close. Just... I mean, there's so many different things that have gone on with this, uh, with the Raiders uh, this year. It's it's kind of getting old with all the different things. Like, there's just the missing piece. That's it. Uh, I mean, just the offensive line, is, it's almost done. Like, you got Colt Miller, left tackle, set it and forget it. Don't even talk about it. Uh, you got John Simpson or Dylan Parma, left guard. I honestly think that if John Simpson falters in any way, Dylan Parma is in. Boom. And uh, we're not looking back because he's a stud. Um, Andre James played like one of the best centers after week seven uh, last year. You're not, uh, you're not, you're definitely holding out hope. And that he can continue to play at that level. Lester Kahn Sr. showed a lot during the preseason. I'm very, uh, very comfortable with what he showed. Um, and then finally, Jermaine Illuminar. That is it. Like, it all comes down to how well this offensive line can keep Derek Carr upright and clear holes for running backs Josh Jacobs and company. But if we're being honest, like, let's be real. If... The Raiders are going to go anywhere this year. It's going to be because this offense carries uh, the team like it has done for years past. Now, don't get me wrong. The defense was better in a lot of different regards this last year. But overall, let's be real. Uh, J.E. is definitely the biggest wild card because over his NFL career, he has had, you know, that 59 to 60 PFF grade. I mean, was it last year? Like a 59.8 PFF grade. Played over like 200 snaps for the Raiders. Didn't allow a sack from what I had seen. Like, he has the potential to be... Uh, a very good right tackle for the Raiders. Like he, he has the uh, the potential to be a short term fix. I'm not debating that. In fact, uh, I, I think he probably is your best bet here. Um, obviously, Thayer Monford and company are there as well. Bam Dili Olasini. We'll see what happens with him. He's probably going to make the practice squad. But uh, Jermaine Illuminor and Thayer Monford, they're probably your two best options. Uh, I, Alex Leatherwood. He's had his opportunities. I don't know what's going to happen at this point. So um, when we talk about the offense, when we talk about what is holding this unit back it's clearly the offensive line it's it and it's mainly right tackle because all those other positions i mean is lester cotton senior gonna get beat yes it's gonna happen is andre james gonna get beat also yes um but i i'm more confident in uh john simpson dylan parm and colton miller uh or, yeah so you know i just when I'm looking at this offensive line, when I'm looking at this Raiders offense, it really does come down to how well this right tackle will be sutured up. Now, could this all be for nothing? Probably. The, could this video be pointless in a couple days when the Raiders go trade for you know Brian O'Neill from the Vikings, uh, one of the best right tackles in the game? Probably. Absolutely. But at the same time, I do think that there is something to be said of the Raiders sticking for Alex, or sticking with Alex Leatherwood for the duration of the offseason. Excuse me. So let's think about it this way: Did the Raiders not have an opportunity? Uh, they drafted. Dylan Parma in the third round. They had multiple opportunities to draft guys like Zach Tome, who the Packers picked up, I believe, in the fourth round, if I'm not mistaken. So, and there were some, you know, Kellen Dyche was an option out there that I think might need just to add a little bit more size. Um, what was it out of Arizona State? Like there were some options for the Raiders, especially late in that, uh, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh rounds, where guys like, okay, they've got a legitimate shot. How about Daniel Falele, the the massive, massive right tackle out of Minnesota that honestly has looked uh, in my mind pretty good um, this offseason season so there were options but it spoke volumes that this franchise wanted to stick with Alex Leatherwood and it was the whole attitude of maybe they could change and maybe they could get the best out of them I, I totally respect that but now that is no longer the case uh, I do think if, if history does show us anything the Raiders are uh, going to stick with their guys to at least show that you know at least see what they got Jermaine Illuminar really showed some good things during this offseason and really um, you know during the preseason as well so I, I'm really expecting um, him to be able to step up but let's be real there let's not make any mistakes about it. Jermaine Illuminar is the biggest wild card for the Raiders offense and I think that that's probably where all the eyes need to be uh, in week one against the Los Angeles Chargers. But let us know what you guys think. Make sure you guys like and subscribe down below. Leave a like and a comment. It helps people find the show. We greatly appreciate all the support that we've gotten and continue to get. You guys are all truthfully awesome. We love every single one of you. In the description down below you'll find all of our social media platforms. So give us a like and a follow there. Also remember to give us a listen and sub on iTunes and finally if you have anything else you'd like to cover send us an email at the sportsbp at yahoo.com or put in the comment section down below and we would love to cover but let us know what you guys think about jermaine illuminor being the biggest wild card for the las vegas raiders